Unicorn Circuit. Welcome to another episode of the Unicorn Circuit, your weekly dose of thanking. Car news. Your town. Uh, um, random eat bag. Conspiracies. Hat cat. Mail bag. Uh, this week we're coming at you from uh, our restaurant Wishbone, uh, which we opened up with chef extraordinaire uh, Gregory, the 2018 Time Out Sydney Food Award Cheap Eat nominee, Mark. That You said that, that rolled off your tongue. Yes. It's the, si it's the sign that's on the wall over there that yeah, I was reading. Uh, but of course, this is the place that we opened a year ago, and so we thought we would um, we would come at you from Wishbone. Now, if you do uh, come to Sydney, uh, you want to check it out, 125 Enmore Road in Enmore. There's lots of little cool things to see. There's 350s at Bonnet on the wall. The paint, does anyone know what it is? Yes, we colour matched the fair lady. Uh, the suspension holding up the tables cocktails and stuff that are inspired by the show and the places we've been, it's pretty freaking awesome. Mud isn't going to be the biggest show we've ever done. Well, for one reason, yes, because the Unicorn Circuit just turned 70. Really? 70 episodes of the Unicorn Circuit. To celebrate, you could go back and watch them all back to back from one right through to seven. Which would take a little while. It'd take a long time. Speaking of which, I think this is going to be the biggest and smallest show we've ever done because the restaurants, uh, we open at five o'clock, by the way. Uh, it's about 4.15, <laughs> so we, we got in here before the punters did because uh, it gets a little bit loose in here. When you, when you fill a bar with Mighty Mods fans with fried chicken and beer, it gets crazy, but which you will see. Importantly, the kitchen is open. So the, the kitchen is this open. This is going to be the tastiest. Like, can, you, can you open up and make us some food while we make a video and put it on the <laughs> internet? So here we are. Martin, oh, there are, is lots of news today. Massive news. So let's dive right into the news, and meanwhile, uh, we will order, we will, I'll just, I'll yell it out, we will order, Martin, some chicken scratchings, please. Oh, they're the best. And some uh, salt and malt vinegar oh. onion rings. Excellent, that's a thumbs up from the kitchen. All right, let's jump let's right into it. the news. <laughs> this week on the news, of course, by now you would have seen Three Evo. What's your number plate? Three it's two Evo. Oh, sorry. It's two, two Evo, but there's also a three because it's the third Evo that we've had. Yes, that's right. You Thanks. would have seen that on the donut. If you haven't, make sure you click the doodle on the doodle. But big news, it's a massive week for Amazing. Oh my God. Thank you very much. Oh my God. Yay. Oh, Mark, that's food ridiculous. Thank you very much. Um, Look Mark, at it. Big news this week, of course, is Nissan are making the RB26 again, the iconic car. Um, I just want to show everybody, so this is our salt and malt oh vinegar rings. This here is chicken scratchings, which has got our special hot sauce and um, togarashi, JDM spice and hemp. They do something really funny to your brain when you see them and smell them. It's like your face nose oh, is about to get just smashed with so awesomeness. So good. Ah, oh, stop it. Anyway, so um, they've made it so, mm. so good. They've made it so that um, you can buy parts for your RV26. Now, originally, I think it was just the 32. They've now extended that range, so 33, 34. Um, you can get a block. You can get pistons. You can get all the bits and pieces. You can get everything <coughs> you need. So hot. Oh, blast your oh. eyeballs out. So that's the big Nissan news. Oh, it is available from select dealerships in Japan <coughs> and some other places. Um, do you reckon do you... they did it because Mazda did it? Did they? Do you reckon? Did they do that? Well, Mazda did the MX-5. Like, hey, you can get MX-5. It's not just RB26s, they're going to remake heaps of stuff. Mm. Okay. Car 32s, which is pretty well, awesome. Well, that's my initial news, Martin. <coughs> Speaking of remaking something, that just destroyed my face. I, I just want to go again, but I need to talk. So, VW is making something called an Arteon. What does that mean? I don't know. But I'm just glad it doesn't have an F in front of it because that would be super awkward. Because that's that would be awkward. Because that's sort of what people owners do to their cars. It's basically a European Kia Stinger. Are they good? Kevin, I never mind. Um, it's basically like a European Kia Stinger. So the question is, is VW doing this in response to the fact that people love Stingers, or are they always going to do it anyway? Essentially, it's like a coupe-looking thing, two-liter engine, like they're using heaps of their stuff, Golf R's and. Sirocco's and all those other things. I think it's a, is it a Scurocco? Because it's Scirocco. got a C in it? I don't know. Anyway, anyway. Arteon, um, optional all-wheel drive. I think you can buy a stock one. Um, well, a base model is like $37,000. That's US as well, so this is not, not a cheap car necessarily. Um, 40 grand gets you like a mid-level one with a bit better technology and a nicer inside. And then you can add, for two grand, they'll give you all-wheel drive. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, that's, this is because it's like Haldex, so it's a front-wheel drive car. Kia Stingers are rear-wheel drive car, but they also make all-wheel drive Kia Stingers. Right. So, but it's a totally different kind of platform. So you can buy um, 
a mid-level one in Adder will drive for two grand. I don't know why you wouldn't, yep. but maybe you just some people just don't care. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, but an all-drive Kia Stinger is like $36,000. So it's an extra 18, no, extra 12,000 bucks. Right. To sort of get a equivalent trim level, which That's means the Kia is still smashing it price-wise. Okay. Massively. Martin, I've got some very exciting news for car enthusiasts everywhere. Oh. But um. first of all, um, hello again, kitchen. Could I get, please, um, some southern fried chicken, please? Um, a wing, a leg, a tender. Um, can I get the Unicorn Ranch and Cheryl's Special Sauce? Cheryl's. Amazing. Yes. Thank you very much. Cheryl's Special Sauce. It's a white, creamy barbecue that is massaged out of a mortar and a pestle of, of some kind. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Martin, the 86 and BRZ, they're updating them. They're like, let's go. No one knows anything else yet. There's no other news. We don't know anything, but we do know that they're coming. That's official. That's official. That's a thing. Which means the good thing for us is the price of the existing ones, which, look, they've lost a bit of value, but they've been holding the value okay, is going to go down. And the new one, are they going to finally do what everyone's been asking for, Mark? They won't do it. Will they make an no. all-wheel drive turbocharged BRZ? No. Because they don't want any Golf R customers. What? They don't want any customers that would have otherwise bought a Golf R. Oh. I think they want their MX-5 crew. Oh. Well, that was a bit of a letdown, Martin. Speaking of wanting the MX-5 crew, actually it has nothing to do with it. So Ford, uh, the news with Ford at the moment is they're pulling out of Russia. And you go, oh. well, why is that a big deal? Well, the big deal is a whole bunch of car makers went, hey, Russia's you know, economy is going to boom and we could get in there and we can sell cars. Russians love cars. Hi, all our Russian friends. And um, they, so they invested heavily into Russia and they built an engine plant and it was the first uh, plant to actually manufacture engines in Russia from a US, originally a US company, so it was a right. big deal. Now they're pulling out. GM did it a while ago because they're like, nah, passenger cars, nah, don't care, don't okay. want them, don't need them. Um, and so Ford is now only making commercial stuff, so like transit, utes, things like that. Yeah. And when you think about it, those kind of practical cars, it's the same that we're seeing here, right? Mm. Like we talked about this last week. Utes and those things that do more than one job are accelerating in growth and other stuff is dropping off, like people aren't buying Commodores. Yep. And this Stinger thing we were just talking about, or the Arteon, Fartion, whatever it's called, like, it's sort of, is, is that what a, you know, our Russian friends want to jump in and drive every day when you could get a ute and throw your motorbikes in the back? And have you seen some of the dirt bike tracks they have in Russia? I think we need to go and have a look. Oh my God. You know what's interesting though, what you're saying about the, the ute sales going through the roof is that our Volkswagen released some figures about the Amarok that they sold last year in Australia. They sold 9,200 or something, around 9,500 of them. Over 80% of them are like high-spec V6 models. Now you can get a two-liter rear-wheel drive, you can get a two-liter all-wheel drive, then you've got V6 versions, you've got carpet interior, vinyl, and all these different kinds, right? But the majority of people are buying high-spec cars. The question is, why? Because the two-liter, I know a lot of people are like, eh, why? But really good car, reviewed well, yep. makes enough power, still has good towing capacity, all that stuff. Why, Martin, is everybody buying the V6 version? Tax breaks. No, I actually don't know. But my guess is it's something to do with the fact that they're still classified as commercial vehicles and there's tax benefits to owning a commercial vehicle. But they're really? only now just starting to reel back in, yeah. That's my understanding. That's a good conspiracy. What's, your, what's the actual reason? Oh, I don't know. Well, you don't know. No, I don't know. I, I just imagine that people are like, I want a nice car, but it's a lot of money to spend for a ute. Because yes. like the, the base level one, they were doing like 40 grand driveway. The V6 one, I don't know, 60, 70, like it's a lot of money. I think the other theory potentially is also once upon a time people bought a sedan, like a family car, and then had like a Falcon Ute or a Kingswood Ute or something, but the, that was very limited with what you could do with it. Yeah. Um, and they're expensive too. Now I think cars generally have gotten cheaper than they have ever been. So the equivalent in terms of how much you earn and what you can buy, and then along comes like a V6 Amarok or a five cylinder turbo Ranger that has Full, proper full drive and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you go, you can go to your farm, you can put all your kids in it, you can put all their stuff in the back, yeah. you can use it on the, during the week for your tradie job, whatever that is, yep. and you can put a camper trailer, like tow a camper trailer and put a tent on the roof. It's like, it does everything. True. So it's potentially your budget that once upon a time was two cars is now one. And what's, what else is interesting is that the autonomy people is coming. Uh, Ford did just announce, Ford Ranger, one of the best selling cars in Australia and New Zealand. They have just announced that from the baseline all the way up, they're introducing, um, automatic autonomous uh, braking that has pedestrian detection, that yeah. has speed sign detection. Where we are in the future and the future is coming at your face. It's filling the eye sockets, it's, we're, it's coming at you, man. Interestingly though, GM have just made a V8, just released this crazy new V8. I think it's a 6.6 .6 litre yeah. iron block, based on LS is my understanding, or, or a small block engine, 
you can argue about LSs, I'm sure, blocks, small blocks, all that kind of stuff. But it's iron blocks. So most of the current V8s is new generation. It's aluminium. It's lighter, cheaper to produce, and not really a problem because for the 500 horsepower that they're making, aluminium's fine. But they've released this new one, which I think is called like an L8 T, T or something. And I got excited because I thought the T was turbo, but no, that just is a, is a number. What T means Tyrannosaurus because it's old technology. I guess so. Well, I think. well, here's the thing. So it's overhead cam technology. No, sorry, it's yeah, overhead. No, overhead valve technology. Right. And you're like, whoa, that sounds fancy. No, that's a that's push rod. Oh. That's like the valves are on the top, but the cam's still in the guts of it like it always has been for the last 70 years or longer. Wow. And it's still got push rods. So GM in 2020, which is when we're going to see it, is still making LS motors or small block motors or whatever, V8s, big capacity, big fuel and big torque. And there, I didn't understand this at first, but then I looked up a picture of the, the, the truck that they're putting it in. And it's just this giant truck with a snow plow the size of the front of the truck on it. I'm like, that sort that of makes, makes sense. sense. You're pushing that tons and tons of snow around with this big old truck with a four-wheel drive system and like an eight-speed auto. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Okay. There it is, everybody. That's the news. Is that everything for you, Martin? Yep. Except All we right. haven't talked about the Evo and the Dino. Oh, the Evo and the Dino. Do we talk about that? Or do we just put a card? Do we whatever? Do we talk about the Evo? I think enough was said in that episode. Um, there's going to be more Evo coming at your face, Heaps. is the short version. Um, and it might get built up to a certain level that we've got to find some other all-wheel drive car in a similar price bracket to battle it. Cool. Really? What? Like a WRX. The car we already have. Oh, that car. Yeah. Yeah, cool. We already have. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Seriously. <laughs> Fuck you. What's next? All right, all right, what's next? Time next up. Is that even legal? This week on Is That Even Legal? Thanks, man. Martin, no worries. Did I tell you about the time that I was waitering here? Kempai! We didn't hear this up. Oh, oh, this, is just, this is just water. No, that was fun. One of the times I was waitering here, and it's funny, and I was like carrying all the stuff off the table, but I couldn't carry their sauce tray, and they're like, take my sauce tray. Do you remember that? Is that sometimes some guy told you to apply yourself? I mean, you never get anywhere in life. If, if you, you apply, apply yourself, yourself, you'll take my sauce tray. Did you tell him that you part own the restaurant? No, they were a bunch of real estate agents. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that was a golf convention. No, anyway, this week, Martin. Martin, would you like to go visit your mum? I like visiting my mum. Sure. What, would you, but sometimes, would you like to not visit your mum because you're just busy doing other stuff? That does happen. Illegal. What? Where? No. In China. No. Um, allegedly, real? according to the internet, Martin. No, okay, so in definitely real. <laughs> no, no, uh, in China, uh, it is legally mandated that older children must visit their parents. I don't even think that's a bad idea. If that's true. Is it? Is it a bad idea? Discuss. And I guess it depends if you like your parents. But, um, you got to go visit them, man. If you want to visit your parents more, make sure they drive an unreliable car. What? Bring, bring. Oh, hey, the wheel's falling off again. Bring, bring. Oh, hey, there's no oil in it. Bring, bring. Oh, hey, something. Because then you can go hang out all the time. But not everyone's mum has a Subaru. Oh, right. See, my mum's got an IS200, and I never hear from her about car issues. Except for that time that... Well, the, that's the 2J. Yeah, fell out unfortunately, of it. because Marty's mum's car got a WRX in it, and my mum's... What's this thing on the internet called a 1J? What's a 1J? And I spoke to Turbo Yoda and he's just like, yeah, we can 1J your mum's IS200. Speaking of IS200s, the next segment in the unicorn circuit is my crap car. My crap car is the awesome segment of the unicorn circuit where you guys send us your crap cars and you have sent in some absolutely incredible crap cars over They've the last in some, 70 for episodes. It. You guys have sent in some crappers. Some crappers. Crackers? Crackers. Cracker. Yeah, particularly awesome cars. Now, I don't think we've had too many of these. So I'm pretty excited about this next crap car. This is a 2000 model Hyundai Excel. Check it out. G'day guys. G'day Mighty Car Mods. This here is my uh, 2000 model uh, Hyundai Excel. What most of us refer to as the Bentley. Given the racing pedigree of the Excel GLX model, Obviously, I've wanted to keep it looking as stock as possible so as to avoid any unwanted attention from the police. There is a few things that I've added. For example, um, this little cap there that I found at one of the local servos. I just think that it's little touches like that that give your car a bit of character. The uh, bush attic sticker. 
which is usually for four wheel drives, but I felt it was fitting for this vehicle. That about does it for the mods. Boasting an eye watering 65 kilowatts at the wheels and 134 newton. <laughs> Boasting a uh, impressive 65. Boasting an impressive 65 kilowatts at the flywheel with 134 newton meters of torque. This uh, vehicle, when it first came out, was not one to be messed with. At first glance, um, this quarter panel seems pretty uh, pretty standard, but um, the light is actually being held together by some double-sided tape, which seems to have long lost its adhesive property. Um, I think there's like a red back in there. I'm just gonna just gonna close that up. The um light adjustment uh, for the height um, I don't know what it's called but it doesn't actually work on this side so um, what I've done I've pinned this uh, little rubber tube and I've wedged it in there next to the light and I've matched it up with the other side against my roller door and it seems to be uh, sort of hitting at a good height in an attempt to do a uh, weight reduction stage one I've taken off the um, hubcaps and removed the uh, radio antenna just to save a bit of added weight but I reckon I've just probably broke even with all the um, all the little stone chips and hail damage wrecking the aerodynamics of the car just to show you a few of the um, interior quirks and modifications of the car this uh, door handle is actually um, attached on with super glue um, it snapped right at the base and I wasn't really hopeful that it would hold at first but it's been working for the better part of a year um, so essentially, uh, when the car turns off, the radio stays on, and so does the overhead clock. I've tried fixing that. Actually, I haven't. I haven't. I've got the, um, the phone dock up above, and the uh, fan-mounted cup holder. Um, and over to this side, let me just uh, get the camera through. Um, the... Um, door sometimes gets stuck from the inside only the uh, the lock mechanism there the top bits actually snapped off before and I've actually I've got that uh, glued together with super glue as well um, it's actually been holding pretty well for about a year as well um, the interior trim is actually reminiscent of the uh, Mel Melbourne like public transport interior and I sort of like that because it sort of keeps it a uh, Keeps it Melbourne spec. Should just try to start the car. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, that's cool. Jump in. It's already started, bro. We'll take it for a quick spin. It's got a manual transmission. It's quite, it's quite powerful with 134 uh, newton meters of torque. Um, I'm just going to do a U-turn here real quick. It's got a pretty good turning circle. Hang on. Hang on. It doesn't like reverse. But aside from that, it drives pretty well. The um, right-hand side the um, shock absorber, I think, is gone. So uh, if I run over a cat's eye on the road, it sort of dips a little, but it's not too bad. As long as, um, as, long as I sort of take uh, speed humps, as if I were driving a lowered 180 SX, usually I don't bottom out, it's not too bad. This is um, something I forgot to mention before, but the actual uh, speedo is, um, the needle's a bit funky. If you have a look at it, it sort of goes up and down all the time. It's really annoying. And um, for the most part, I'm never quite sure what speed I'm going. But the trick to sort of stop it from doing that is, you go quicker. Because 
once you get to about 50, 60 kilometers an hour, you can hardly even notice it. There's like a tiny little chip right there, which it's not big and it doesn't really obstruct my line of sight or anything. All it does is just annoy the shit out of me. I keep the car regularly serviced um, every 25,000 kilometers. Um, it's done just over 241,000 on the clock. And um, I think it's on its third engine, but it's doing pretty well. That pretty much um, concludes my 2000 model uh, Hyundai XL. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. See ya. Do you remember when those cars were just everywhere? Absolutely. They were not. like the car that it everybody had. It was the had. pinnacle of automotive enhancements for one's they, life. They were a barge. Or something. A barge. <laughs> a, a bargain. Oh, amazing. Thank bargain. you very much. Awesome. Thank you. So oh, good. Look at that. Cheryl's. 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 See, the Cheryl's sauce goes right near Marty, which is yeah. awesome. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. All right, um, the Cheryl Sauce and the Unicorn Ranch. So, uh, if you'd like to send us your amazingly crap car, send us a video, film it that way, don't worry about any music, careful of the wind noise, and send it to mycrapcar at theunicorncircuit.com. We would love to share it and show all the people who are watching this amazing show. Is it really hot and good? It's just excellent. I just wanted to point out that uh, Gregory Llewellyn is famous for his fried chicken. Uh, he's the other guy that owns this restaurant with us. His book, Fried Chicken and Friends, you may have seen in a bookstore near you. This is what he does. Chicken gravy from scratch, no bullshit in a box. We're gonna show you a step-by-step -step sort of tutorial on a really easy chicken gravy, even using the necks of a chicken, which you probably feed to your dog, some of you. You can use chicken legs, you can use chicken wings, you can use a whole chicken, who gives a shit? As long as the chicken parts are roasted, enough a little trick you have your paper you've used a spoon just get all that stuff off the bottom pick up your paper all that sort of like grease all those chicken bits stuck on there that's all the good shit that's all the stuff you want look at the color of that that's the that's that's almost like a finished gravy in itself if you could only smell my house i actually had to open the doors because it smelled so good <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> removing all the next the vegetables, all the aromatics. See you later. Those are going in the bin. We're gonna use a little bit of flour, a little bit of chicken fat. I had a little bit of chicken fat laying around. You could also, as you're roasting the bones, all the moisture is evaporated off the tray. You could even just tip out the, the chicken fat and use it. See, lots of people add flour and water with the gravy, but it's the fat that will suspend the flour in the gravy to make it really, really smooth, super, super viscous, and a beautiful texture. My friends, this is chicken gravy with $3 chicken necks and just a whole lot of waiting. Enjoy. This is his thing. He's been making this chicken for years, but now this is wishbone chicken. Look at it. Um, and one uh, newspaper recently reported this to be one, the best fried chicken in Sydney. I'm just gonna dip this in Cheryl's special is sauce. Is that a tender? Yeah. Oh, dude. And, cause you can order what kind of bites you want. Crunchy, chickeny. Oh God, so good. Delicious. And hot. Mum. Fresh. What's next? Next on the Unicorn Circuit is one of my favourite sections of this entire show. It's Tin Foil Cat. No! Are you gonna just try and do it? And Are you gonna eat the other end of it? Yeah. Where's my tender? What? I've never had a tender before. You, here you go, I dipped it for you. There but you, you dip it in ranch, dude. You got to dip it in Cheryl. Yeah, you, Look, you ranch let's, it. Let's be fair about this. We have to be diplomatic yeah, because okay. you can't you can't steal my chicken, dude. So which end do you want? Well, you already no, I'll, no, I'll nibble off. Wait, I'll no, there you go. No, but then I don't get an endy bit. Yeah, take the endy bit. Everybody knows the endy bit is with the, the ranch. Best. You know what? I'm happy to go with ranch just for this one time. But then you got to dip, dip your other out. end into Cheryl. Oh. oh. that's just excellent. All these sauces are made here in house. This is no Heinz, does it go in the cupboard or the fridge stuff, it's made here. One of the sauces is smoked through an old refrigerator, like a smoker. Yes, it's a DIY fridge that's been turned into a smoker to smoke so the amazing. sauce. So amazing. Martin, what, what's the conspiracy this week, mate? The conspiracy this week is to do with, not this, but stuff that you basically get this and you add sugar to it and that's... Soft drink. Soft drink. Do you need me to get one from the fridge for an example? No, because we don't sell the soft drink that we're talking about right now. Oh! The conspiracy is... Oh, now I'm excited. That diet drinks, diet soft drinks, have zero benefit to your health. 
Zero. It's a conspiracy. The conspiracy that it says diet on it or like sugar free or sugarless doesn't do anything. Nothing. It's just marketing. It doesn't really? do anything. This is all allegedly because I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So take it or leave it. Take well, it what is a, the conspiracy Take exactly? it with a pinch of sugar. That, that, they sell, that this stuff is sold as diet and or sugar free and or sugarless or better for you somehow. Um, when it's actually not. And the conspiracy is it just says that so you'll buy it thinking you're going to have a health benefit and you're not. Right. Yeah. And the way this got tested recently, the reason this came up is it got tested recently and some scientists put together a test where they basically generated a soft drink. Yeah. And added varying amounts of sugar. No, sorry. Ver the same amount of sugar or sweetener. And then they just changed the calorific benefit in terms of how much carbohydrate was in it. And the theory is our little caveman brain in there goes, oh, I need to drink more of this because this is actually what's going to sustain me more. Yes. It's more carbs, it's, better, it's more for, better for my body, which is yep. sort of more the subconscious than actually what's going on. But taste, the whole point of taste is like, this is good, this is going to sustain me and it's hot and protein and from animal I want it. Yes. You know, and something, you're not going to eat grass because there's nothing in it for you. So they just changed that. Oh, um, Martin, just be careful what you're saying, mate. They just... Um, it's not start a war yeah. tonight. Anyway, so they changed the amount of carbohydrate, thinking that people would be tricked into going, well, the one with the most carbs in it is definitely going to be the one that everyone's going to think tastes the best. Yes. Nah. The one, the one with the least carbs was like no good. The one with the most was no good. They did about five or six. The one bang in the middle was the one that everyone unanimously went, that is the best one. Really? Yeah. Which means that there's some balance there that your brain is getting between the sweetness of something and the carb, like the carbohydrate and the benefit to your body, but it won't, it won't be full either way. Point is, you can't fool people's bodies using like sugar stuff. Yes. To make them think that. So it's you can fool the brain yeah. into wanting to consume it, but you can't fool the body. Like you can't make it have stuff that it doesn't have. And you've only got to drink like a sugared, sugar, like sugary soft drink next to a one that's artificially sweetened. And you, there's just a, there's something about it, isn't there? It's not like you necessarily go, oh, that one tastes like crap. You're like, oh, there's just something going on. Right. Yeah. But. Got a health benefit, it might sell. Let's just try it. Why not? Artificial stuff in it. See you later. It's a good conspiracy, Martin. I mean, I never know where you're going to go with this. I don't know if it's Facebook. I don't know if it's Google. I don't know if it's putting sticky tape over your laptop camera. I never know where it's going to go. And that's what I love about this segment. Just What's next, Martin? Think, just think about stuff. Um, next is your favourite. Is this your favourite segment? Oh, are we, are we? Are we? Yeah, we are. Are we ready to thank? We're ready to thank. Next up is thanking. Thanking is the delightful art of recontextualising a product's name by taking a photo of it down near your courts. Now, before we do that, Martin... <coughs> no, I'll keep talking. You get that in you. That looks epic. Um, Straight in What I do want to say, um, which is something shows. that we'd spoken about a little while ago, some people are like, oh. I want to take my girl out to dinner, or my boy or whatever, but they're kind of like, I want to bring my girlfriend down. We do like a range of sumptuous cocktails oh. that anyone can consume, but most of them are related about uh, things that we've been doing on the show, which is why some of you, yes, we saw your complaints, um, Twisted was removed from the menu, uh, which I since found out Marty did it. But we've got <laughs> Take Me Back to Tokyo, we've got Road to Suzuka, there's E85 made with bourbon, smoked maple and cinnamon. Um, we've got a Skyline Slushy, oh, Vodka Blue Lagoon, Sherbet. It's pretty ridiculous, so if you're bringing your lady friend or your man friend, or kids, which can come, we are licensed, but if your kids with an adult, they can come, then check it out. Banking, let's just dive right into it, man. This week, I got a lot of thanks. There's many, many thanks to do. Um, while I do that, do you want a burger, by the way? Yeah. Because I'm going to order a burger. There's some new burgers on there, if yeah, you have yeah, a quick yeah, yeah. look. Have a quick look and choose what you want. Because Godzilla? I'm... Yeah, Godzilla. Fried chicken, bacon, cheddar, bourbon, barbecue, barbecue and pickles? Yes. Do you want that? Oh my god. Uh, we also do the 86, which is fried tofu. Yes, that's the 86 reference. Um, but I'm going to get fried chicken, blue cheese, hot sauce, carrot, celery. Um, or there's the one inch punch, which is fried chicken, Dude, sweet, I... sour, cucumber, spicy because mayo. Because Nissan is remaking the RB26, I'm getting Godzilla. That's it. Awesome. And we'll yep. get uh, buffalo. Um, uh, excuse me, kitchen. Could I get, please, a Godzilla burger and a buffalo soldier? Yes. Amazing. Thank you very much. Martin, we yes. need a time check. How long until the customers come in? How long until we open? What time is it? Oh, we've got like 18 minutes. 18 minutes. We All right, let's done. do this. Thanking. Let's just dive right in, Martin. Yeah. I've got some incredible thanking. I'm going to put it here so that you can see exactly what's going on, Martin. I've got two thanks of the week. That's how crazy well, that's it's getting this week. Thanking um, has gone off lately, hasn't it? The thanking page has gone ballistic. You don't send the thankings to us. You put the thankings on the Facebook page, which is the thanking on the balls book, dot ball. Uh, it's on the thing on the doodle. Um, and then we get them. And then I go through them and I pick them, and then he gets to see them. Go, 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 awesome. go, go. Bang, Martin, so big. There it is. Just dive right into it. 
Next up, Mun cock flavoured seasoning. It's always Caribbean. I know. We've had the Caribbean cock soup. We've never had the Caribbean cock. I want it. Nugget of whatever that is. Could someone get us some Caribbean traditional cock, please? That's chicken salt, man. Is that what it is? I Caribbean reckon. style. I would love to get I'll that in my mouth. That. Absolutely delicious. Mun, jack in. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, uh, Goodwood. There you go. Oh, that's some good. organic wine. Australia. Sh sh well. Shiraz. Um, well done. Well done. Mun, uh, Bulls Balls. <laughs> and there's two of them. Look at that. He's, well he's got a lot of shoes. There you go. Mount Fank. Well done. Have we had Mount Fank before? We've had it, it before. Fankland? And it blew our minds. Yeah. But this is an interesting well, fanking technique. It, I've blew, it blew my before. mind again. But it's, it's the hold, it's the girth, it's excellent. Take a seat, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, because that's not a traditional fank, but it's still excellent. Martin, next up, what does this say? Okay. Oh. No, moving what on. What is it? It was rude. Martin, this is anus. Of course full, it's rude, it's fanking. Martin, anus, full motion. <laughs> oh. I'm moving on. Below the belt. There it is, Martin. He looks like balls. that's you. Man, he's, he's got the green cargoes. And the red yep, flanny. And the red flanny. There he goes. He's you. Someone asked me why I don't buy more clothes. That's because I'd rather buy car parts. It's a tip for new players. Fair enough. Martin, balls in vinegar. <laughs> Make them spicy. There you go. Bun sized beef, Martin. I thought you'd appreciate that one. I don't know why, but I just thought you would like the idea of a bun sized beef. That chicken is just off the chain, man. Man, that's why it's won some The only problem with accolades. doing this here is that like, I just want to eat the food. Yeah, I know. I can't well, concentrate. Well, there's going to be burger time soon. Martin, this just says fank, which is excellent. So congratulations. We're halfway through. We're doing a speed round. Let's go. Martin, old pecker. Old pecker. I think we've had it before. But here it says, away with, I don't know if the bag is related, away with old pecker. Oh. See that? Like, I don't know if it was a double fank or an accident, but either way... I like that there's a trolley and a polished well concrete floor. Man, what, what's this one here? Ratchet um, up your ass. Ratchet up your ass. What did that say? <laughs> I don't know what that means, uh, but well done. PS2. Apparently, in other news, they're bringing out a Mega Drive with 10 games on it later this year. Like no. a, a Mega Drive 2, like the old round one. Really? Martin, I am the ultimate handheld device. Well done. Good job. Who's going to argue, argue with that? that? Mancock. No calories, Martin. Is that that's not mango coke, is it? Oh, I don't know nah. actually. I don't know. No it's definitely not that, something man. that we get here. Nut meat, Martin. Veggie delight. A whole box. You're committing. Gross. Six by four hundred and fifty. That's like almost three kilos of nut meat. But there's a lot of meat. There's vegetarian options here. In case you're wondering. That's so much nut but meat. But it's not nut meat. Ooh. Nut patty. Oh, you pat. Pat, pat, pat. That kind oh. of thing. I think, I don't know. Menthol. Man, is that the same oh, as the other one? No, that's different. What's that so, one say? Don't read it. Uh, all right, GooTube. That's where you upload videos, right? Oh. oh. That's the other one. Oh. Man, yes to the creamy taste you love. Also known as Cheryl's special doing? sauce. I don't, oh. What is that? <laughs> I didn't even look at the bottom. We're going to have to add an arrow to that. Sorry, that's my alarm going off. Telling me, um, people are going to be hearing about that. We six need to minutes. add an arrow to that dongle there. Martin, next up, Root Health Organic. I think this one's mainly about the picture. Tiger nut drink. No, more about this. Oh. <laughs> um, I think. Um, next up, we've got a filled bone. There it is. And Happens. now, Martin, it's time for Fank of the Week. You got two. Two Fanks of the Week. <laughs> Fank of the Week number one. There it is. Oh. That's cock grease. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much. It's actually Thomas's cock Not grease. Uh, and the next one, of course, is... Uh, that is the... Um, oh, this is why it was clever. We've had a big gap filler before. This is beat off big gap filler. Two fangs, one product, one thumb. Excellent. Thank you. Just lifting the general, you know, brilliance of the of internet. The world. You know what we're doing, we're, we're, we're not saving the world, but we're, we're providing mediocre and occasional laughs for yes. people who need it. Exactly. Mainly us. Mainly us. And That's the okay. 17 people still watching. Uh, you can send us your thanking pictures, of course, to the thanking Facebook page, which is faceballs.com forward slash thanking daily. We check it regularly. The page is going off. There's a lot of thankaholics on there that love <laughs> putting their thanks up. So uh, check that up, Martin. I don't believe we have any mailbag this week. No. Do we? Well, we don't because we're not at the mailbag. Uh, which means um, next up is time for random eat bag. Not so random. <laughs> I got carried away with all the chicken that was in front of me, mm -hmm. and I forgot that we have a My Town. Oh, yeah. So, this 
is the most awesome, awesome, awesome sauce segment ever. This is my sound. Roll the thing. I love this thing. My town. This is where you send us a mad video of your town. We've had some of the most amazing internet video experiences of our lives seeing where you guys come from. Because normally you get like the glitzy tourism video yes. and it usually sucks. Mm, it and they're does. like, you should come here. We have the best art gallery ever and the best sculpture thing ever and the best boat that's sitting out in the harbour and you can come and look at it. And Martin, I'm going to make one. You're going to make a my town? I'm going to make a my town. That's good. Yeah. I'm actually going to do it. That's I'm, I'm going to make a my town of where I grew up, around the old Dural Castle Hill area. Shout out to the Hills boys, whose cars were always faster than the Sutherland Pools back in the 90s, which was true. Actually, it wasn't, because when I drag race you, you absolutely dominated me. Yeah. Um, but shout out to the Hills boys anyway. H um, Castle Hill crew. Woo! I think the difference was it. Usually in the Hills cars, Dad had bought him the car. Was the man, difference? Not, no, not, not me, man. I was, <laughs> I was pumping that Barrera Waters ferry backwards and forwards. I was making ferry floss, and I dressed up as a Styrofoam Vodafone, as you know. I was earning my money the hardest way possible. Well, actually, it wasn't hard. There's a lot of people struggling out there. But I was dressed as a as a Styrofoam phone that came from someone else's shift, and then and they put it on, and I put it on wet. And you got was, punched in the balls by that. I kid. got punched in the balls multiple times. <laughs> Anyway, in this episode of My Town, this is freaking awesome. We're going to Sheffield in the UK. This is Stephen's video. Check it out. Hello, Marty. Hello, Moog. Hello, Unicorn Circuit. And welcome to my town of Sheffield, UK. So let's get to it. So we start our trip off today at Lady Canning's, just on the edge of the Peak District. It's one of my favourite spots in Sheffield and has some of the most amazing views. Uh, it's one of the highest points in Sheffield. And from here on a clear day, you can see Lincoln Cathedral, which is about 50 miles away. Now before we go any further, we need to give a rain finger alert. We're riding electric today, which means we can just chuck and chopped and chopped. So now we've done all that climbing to get to the top of Lady Cannings, we can enjoy all the trout that Lady Cannings has to offer. So this is the easiest of the trails here, and the great thing about this area it's been built to accommodate all abilities of cycling so whether you're a child or a professional you can still have a fun day out but this is just one of the variety of tracks available in Sheffield and these include Parkwood Springs, Granite Side and the jump tracks at Bowl Hill. Now we've enjoyed the Cooking on Gas Trail we'll start heading to Sheffield City Centre and we'll take the scenic route so you can see some of the amazing countryside Sheffield has to offer. Now this is Mayfield Alpaca Farm sadly it wasn't open today but you may be able to see the animals just in the back of the shop. And when they are open, you can see all kinds of animals, such as meerkats, deer, llamas, even goats for you, Moog, and of course, alpacas, like this guy. So this is the main route us mountain bikers use to get between the city and the peaks. You get amazing views up here. And in summer, there's more animals to say hello to. The only problem is this one notorious hill we're coming onto now. Now on the way down it's lovely, but it's also one of the steepest climbs in Sheffield with the loosest of surfaces, so traction is non-existent, and this has earned it many unspeakable nicknames. But on the plus side in summer, the sides are lined with blackberries, so you're never short of a sugar reserve to get up it. So now we're heading towards Porter Brook, which is one of our many lovely green spaces in Sheffield. And this part of the route is a nice change in the usual on your way up to the peaks, as it's flat which is rare for Sheffield, despite the common lights only built on seven hills. Although I forgot there's one problem. For some reason, dry socks never make it past this point. So this is Porterbrook itself, and behind this is Ancliffe Park. This is a site where 75 years ago, a US B-17 flying fortress called Mi Amigo crashed, killing the entire crew. And this was recently commemorated with a unique flypast by both the British and American Air Forces. So now we're heading out through the back of Encliffe Park to rejoin the road, and our first destination is the Botanical Gardens. This features some national collections of plants not commercially available in the UK. Now the gardens are just behind this fence, and you might be able to make out the domed glass pavilion that hosts some of these plants. And this is Naughty House, one of my favourite pubs, and they serve the best pies you've ever tasted. 
Now I'll show you around one of the two universities in Sheffield. Now the big building in the background is the Arts Tower, which features the Paternoster, an open, non-stopping lift that you have to jump on and off. Quite the traumatic experience for unsuspecting freshers. And this is our students' union. Now in Sheffield we're spoiled. We have four trees for every person. So a park like Firth Park, Ponderosa, which is really great for outdoor games such as Nerf Wars, and Crooks Valley Park, which has its own kayaking leg. Now this is the famous Hendo's factories. Hendo's is a relish only available in Sheffield, which northerners swear by. Anything solid, they'll chuck Hendo's on it. And there's a bottle on its way to you guys for a random meat bag. Now we're in Sheffield city centre itself. So this is City Hall, Town Hall, our Cathedral, Crucible, famous for hosting top tier snooker, and the Lyceum Theatre. Now we'll go explore the Winter Gardens. And finally, an area made famous by Doctor Who, particularly the Park Hill Flats on top of the hill. Now that's enough cycling and walking. Let's get some actual driving in, seeing as this is supposed to be a car show. Now this is Lady Bower Reservoir, and just up from Lady Bower is Derwent Reservoir, which was famous for where the dam busters practiced their bowing runs with the bouncing bomb. And finally, to finish this video up, I'll take you one of the best driving runs in the UK, Snake Pass. As voted for by many automotive surveys, Snake Pass connects Sheffield and Manchester across the Pennines, and whilst it was once the main route, it has been replaced, leaving this road as a tourist and driving enthusiast destination. It was also a stage for the Tour de Britain race, which adds to Sheffield's reputation as the outdoor city, as we also hosted the Tour de France in 2014. Unfortunately, British weather had to spoil our fun. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed exploring my town of Sheffield, UK. There was some much more of a steel and the Arctic Monkeys, regardless of what the internet says. Stephen, thank you very much for sending us a Legend. video. That was epic. We appreciate we, the time. This, that's my favourite segment of the show. Really I know is. we said the other segments were, but this was actually my favourite segment of the show because I love seeing where people live, seeing where they're at, seeing what they like. Through the eyes of the beholder, that's the right. town holder. You can send us a video of your town, of course, to uh, my town at theunicorncircuit.com. Uh, and we'll have a look, shoot it this way, don't put music on it, um, send it to us, and then um, we might put it on the show. And you'll be viewed by like at least 17 people. Actually, in all seriousness, Martin, there's about 100,000 people that watch this show, and what I've noticed is they're all legends. Yeah. Have you noticed? Yes, I have. There's no, ah, do this, do this. They're just like, hey man, thanks for the show. I really like it. Mm. A few people saying they want it as a podcast, but luckily the uh, YouTube app now works in the background, so you can have it like as audio. Yeah. But I do want to do a shout out to all the awesome viewers of the Unicorn Circuit because you guys are just rad. They're just cool. They're full of positive vibes, and it's not the biggest show on the internet. No. Nowhere near. No. You know, you literally this, 100,000 of you, but the people who watch rolling. it really like it. You keep the Unicorn train on the tracks. Yes, Make on the track. Good. And it's fun. Yeah. I don't know, I think it's fun. Do you think it's fun? I, I, I have a good time. If you mm. guys have a good Thank time, you. then so be it. Uh, Sorry Martin, that you know 100,000 of you don't have chicken right now, because imagine that. You know what's Imagine awesome? if you had a stadium, because 100,000 people, by the way, is a stadium, a big stadium, packed to the brim. Which is like, why someone said in the comments, Unicorn Circuit episode 100, we have to do live. Live audience. Imagine if we could get all 100,000 people in the same place at the same time. And just have them all commenting. And then they all get wishbone. That'd be pretty oh good. Oh my God. That would be pretty good. Um, anyway, thank you very much for the good vibes. I was here wavering one night, Martin, and a guy came in and he was sitting here by himself and I came and said hello and he'd ordered the poutine, which is like fries, um, gravy, Beef, meat, yeah. um, cheese, cheese curds that I think is imported from Wisconsin. I will check with the people at the back. Beer. Anyway, delicious. It's like if you're from Canada, you know exactly what a poutine is if you don't come and get one. Anyway, he ordered the poutine and I was like, um, oh, you know, have you had that before? And he's like, I'm Canadian, bro. I oh mean, my god. Oh god. So how do you say it? It's, it's not bro, it's air. I'm Canadian air. Canadian air. Uh, and I'm like, what do you do for a job? A chef. No. What does he make? Oh my god. Poutine. So I'm just like, oh, I'll leave oh, you to it. I just my. heard the bell go, by the way. Um, anyway, um, he ordered it and he said it was absolutely ridiculous. And I was like, yes. it's not us making the poutine. Yeah. They're like, the head chef dude is an American dude. And so he's more capable of doing that than we are. But anyway, that's the, that's the story. It's Martin, time what's for next? Random, what's next? Now we're doing random meat bag properly. Oh, are we? We diverge and digress. Maybe our burgers should be random meat bag. How good oh, that they won't get it. Oh, oh yes. yes. Thank you very much. Awesome. Oh, that looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, Legendary, dude. thank you very much. Give me my Godzilla. Is this Godzilla? Yeah, man. That's is Godzilla it? bacon. Yep. Oh, look at that. Yep, they come me. with tater tots. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Random meat bag coming at you.
this week on Random Eat Bag, we just ordered some food from our own place. I just want to fill you in with exactly this one here. This is the Buffalo Soldier. So this is the uh, famous Wishbone Fried Chicken, Blue Cheese, Hot Sauce, Carrot, Celery on Martin's Potato Buns. Not his. That's a famous kind of potato bun that are... Uh, uh, are they from America? Does anyone know? They're Dutch. Even better. He's Dutch. Yes. That's excellent. Who would have known? Anyway, Martin's Fried potato chicken, buns. bacon, cheddar, bourbon barbecue, and pickles. Does it get any better? I'm getting right. I'm yep. getting right. Martin, get yeah. right in there. I'm, I'm going to do the full cyclorama. Not a cyclorama. What's it called? It's 360. Um, a 360 degree. And then over there, you've got your business. Um, Thank you very much for watching the show. Uh, if you do oh, want to come and visit us, uh, wishbonerestaurant.com.au or you can find us on so Instagram good. or on the, what's the other one called? Facebook. Uh, we are open seven nights a week from five o'clock. We're open for weekends, for lunch, from midday, cocktails. So, I mean, we didn't even go through half the stuff. There's alcoholic slushies, there's bourbon ice cream. Beers. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff. Coleslaw, hot beers. chips, mac and cheese, pickles, cornbread waffles, man. And, um, and desserts, of course. With Belgian waffle butter. ice cream sandwich with warm chocolate fudge. Anyway, this is the Buffalo Salt. Martin, I'm going to give you a cheers. Look at that. Look at it. Cheers, Martin. Cheers. Thank you for watching. That's been the Unicorn Circuit. Oh. Thank you, kitchen crew. Thanks, Thank guys. you, staff. Legend. Legendary, as always. Thank you. Oh, my God. And uh, good evening and good night. Uh, Ridiculous. Oh. That's the best chicken burger you can get. They were right, Martin, with that award. They were right. Just off its chops. So tasty. Um, Piping hot. Crunchy. Just a flavour explosion.